Um, how are you doing? Good. Yes, just fine. Time is passing quicker than I'd like, but it's okay. <laughs> We're doing good. We're blessed. You have a good view here? Watch everybody in the city? We have a wonderful view here. We're looking at the Capitol, and they're not going to take that away. They're going to... I don't think they're going to build anything in front of it. <laughs> but that's what got to say. We used to live up in the cove. Our children went to Skyline High School, mm -hmm. and uh, here we are. Okay. Yep. And our children are here. Except for Scott. Scott still lives in New York, mm -hmm. works for the Sacramento Kings, and, uh, and my uh, daughter works uh, for a hotel chain here. And also uh, I have a young man, uh, Michael, who is a school teacher here. Yeah. That's great. Keep the family close. Yes, he's at Hawthorne Academy, and uh, he's doing well. Oh, yeah, great. Doing a little coaching. So 30 years ago, you hosted the All-Star Games, all the events going on. When I think back at that, when we came here, I thought it was a very poor decision on the part of Sam Battistone and the NBA to move an NBA team into a city this size who had just lost an ABA team who had won the championship. Mm -hmm. We were facing big-time college basketball with really, if you look at the University of Utah and BYU, they had the finest arenas in the country probably, you know, on campus. So I thought, uh, give us three years, we'll be out of here. I said, we'll head further out to the West Coast. And instead, uh, here we are, I don't know, 50 years later, I guess. But uh, a lot of things happened in that time. Yeah. You know, and a lot of things built on the idea. I remember uh, Wendell Ashton, the publisher of the Deseret News, and a big supporter of getting the Jazz to come here, getting professional basketball. He thought, he says, if we get professional basketball here, everywhere in the world, every day, Utah will be mentioned when they give us scores. Mm -hmm. And he said, we'll, be, we'll make big time TV and what have you. And he, he hoped that along with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, yeah. that we would get a new, uh, a new, uh, uh, what was it? Arena. A, a new arena, mm -hmm. but I was thinking more of the, where the Opera House, uh, a Robin Hall. Oh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful. He thought we could, we could have a, a, a large center here in the middle of town where we'd have a basketball arena, probably play hockey someday there, you know, uh, Major League Hockey, basketball and have plays and operas and all the other things. So we got a Provenal Hall, and we have the new Delta Center, and, uh, and so part of his dream came true, that was for sure. Well, a lot of it grew, I mean, after you got here with the Jazz, and then what did it take to, to get the NBA to say, okay, we'll host the All-Star Game? Well, we had to convince them that we could put the game on, and that was very important because don't forget, we were starting to think about the Olympics here. And we had failed in getting the Olympics once before. So, you know, we needed an arena big enough to host the, uh, some, some part of the Olympics. But we had to prove to the Olympic Committee, all right, and to the rest of the world, really, that this city could put on major events. And ha what came along? We had the Final Four here, the famous Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. Larry Bird uh, thing. That was a big success. Of course, we had uh, playoff teams here. We were starting to, to think about getting a better building, which we eventually did. We, were, we had money in, in, injected into the program by Larry Miller, and we got the support of the Mormon Church. And when they went along with it, then it looked like we were going we were going to be on our way. Well, I, know we it's a, I know it's a lot of work to, to host the All-Star event. The NBA does a lot of it. The a, NBA a lot of this, does a lot of it. A lot of the organization and stuff. They learned by us, by the way. Hmm. They came in here, and they never had to promote the game anywhere else. It's just, if you do it in New York, everybody, there's just enough people that the money flows out somewhere. But we had to go out and sell it, that the game was actually going to be here, and that it was a big event. And it turned out it was, it was probably the biggest sporting event that we had had up to that time. Yeah. So, and what about your favorite memories of that weekend? One of the funny things was, of course, I was retired at that time from actively being part of the uh, jazz basketball program. I was in the front office and what have you. And I remember they asked me to to do the old-timers game, mm -hmm. the legends game. Right. They don't like to say old-timers. Of course, we were going to have Hot Rod Only, mm -hmm. who's going to be the star of our team and a lot of players. And so anyway, one day I feel somebody like 
behind me, uh, excuse me, coach, 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 it's Larry Miller. And Larry Miller and I got along famously. I mean, we never had a, a disagreement, you know. Uh, I always said to him, it's your team, it's your money, go ahead, I can only advise you. I'm not going to prevent you or say that anything is, is wrong. So he'd, he'd have great ideas, you know, like, oh boy, we'd have a good team, we got Patrick Ewing. Oh yeah, Larry, that would be a great idea. What do you want to give him, the temple? <laughs> what, what's New York going to want for Larry Ewing, for, for, you, for Patrick Ewing? So anyway, he uh, then said, uh, hey, would you mind, he said, I see you're going to be the coach of the Legends team. He says, you think I could be the, the assistant coach? So I said, hey, it's your place, you know, certainly. Well, I said that, but when it actually happened, the day of the game, and he was down next to me, an official came down and he said, Coach Slade, over here, please. There's somebody from the, Matt Winnick, by the way, who ran basketball operations for the, for the league called me over. He says, what's Larry Miller doing on the bench? I said, he's my assistant coach. He goes, no, he isn't. He's not part of the program, you know, this is going to be. So I said, hey, let me tell you something. Look around. Who do you think owns this place? I said, he's the owner. I said, you go tell him he can't do this. And he says, well, I'll go see the commissioner. I said, you can go see who you want. But I'm not telling him he can't coach the team. I told him he could. Well, they, the guy never came back. So anyway, Larry, all he wanted to do, he says, I want to call one play. So we had the legends, we had no plays, we had no <laughs> practice, we had nothing, you know. He just thought everybody, every he thought every team in the league, I guess, had the same plays. And they did only different callings. So I said, all right. I said, you call a play out, A, the A, A play, A down. That's the call. So during the game, I'd say, give it to him, Larry. A down, he'd go, A down, give it A down. Yeah. <laughs> then in the timeouts, I said, all right, what are we going to do? We're coming out of the timeout. What are we going to run, Larry? A down, okay, we got it. <laughs> there was no such thing, but he enjoyed it, he had fun and what have you. So and you guys to, took pictures. There were, you gave a photo album to Gail Miller of you and Larry coaching yes. and Hot Rod on the bench. Yes. Yeah. And then, not only that, but they gave me a ring, all right? This, mm. is, a, this is a replica of the ring they give you. Wow. And so... Now, this ring was given to me when I actually coached the, the All-Star Game in Denver in mm. 1984. They gave me the same kind of ring for coaching the Legends. Oh, okay. Came in a nice box with my name on the top and everything. And they gave it to me after the game was over. The, the, one of the guys, Matt Winnick, the same mm -hmm. guy that was yelling at us. So <laughs> he gave me the box and he said, here, coach, take this with you. A little souvenir of the game or something like that. Same ring was inside, similar. So I said, you know, I went over to Larry and I said, Larry, I said, I know you didn't get a ring. I said, but here, you oh, take this ring. You already have one. I already have one from the from the big game. That's nice. And so he said, uh, well, thank you very much. And he took it and I, I then he got worried. I said, well, I, I hope he doesn't lay it down somewhere and put it, you know, it doesn't seem very important to him. <laughs> well, sure enough, a few years later, I got a call from Gail Miller saying, Hey, we found this uh, this uh, box with a ring in it, and it has Frank Layden. I said, "Is it Scott's ring? Who who is supposed to get this ring? Where?" And she didn't know the story. And I explained to her. I said, "I want Larry to have the ring. You know, yeah. he didn't get one. He wanted it and whatever, a little remembrance. But he took it, I guess, and just threw it in his desk drawer or something. And forgot oh, about it. So it popped up again. That's awesome. But it was a it was a good time for all of us." Mm -hmm. And it sent a message out to the world that, yes, Salt Lake City was ready. Yeah. And, of course, we had the finals here and so many other right. big events. And, and what did, uh, how did Barbara help you through all the events and coaching and she everything? Put up, she put up with all my complaints. <laughs> Barbara was the most wonderful partner I could possibly have. She always was supportive and she was never critical. Only once. Only once. We had one play. You probably deserved at, it. At the end, yes. At the end of every game, if we needed one shot, all right. Well, what do we call it? We had the, we had the, we had a call call at the end of the game, and one day I don't know what we say the Z play or something. That would be the last shot, and we never made it. The play never worked. 
So one day we're riding home from a game which we had lost by one point again. We would take the last shot of the game and miss it. And Barbara says to me, hey, can I make a suggestion? I never say anything to you, never say, never critical, and she never is saying that. that. <laughs> She says, but take the A play and stick it you know where. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> that was the only time she was ever critical. But was, quite it, was it fun for you to be around the crowds and when the All-Stars came? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Did you I get really starstruck did. with the players? I never said anything to anybody, but I was there, and I was not going to miss that. <laughs> you know, you know it, it, the funny thing is, uh, Mary, is, is not getting starstruck by the players. You know, I mean, we, we had friends who we introduced to Magic Johnson, and, and the lady almost passed out. She, she hyperventilated. She started, mad, mad, mad. I mean, but it was outside of basketball when we ran into people in the, you know, we've had, we were out at dinners in, in Vegas with, with Frank Sinatra. Oh, boy. You know, Tommy Lasorda or something. Yeah, well, when we met people outside the realm of basketball, all right. Believe it or not, I was the star <laughs> when we went, we went out. I was the basketball person. Yeah. That was important. But when we went out with others outside our room, with the entertainment world, right. the political world, you know, we got a, a phone call from Bill Clinton. Hmm. And he said, I root for the Jazz because we don't have a team in Arkansas. And so we sent we sent him sweatsuits with oh, okay. Jazz written on and saw him and his wife, uh, you know, uh, uh, jogging in the jazz That's suits. Fun. Yeah. So we saw, we saw a lot of giants of other walks of life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people we were in. <clears throat> this is a true story. We were in 1984, the summer of 1984. We were in Italy. We were in Rome. And people were hollering across the street, Numero uno, Utah Jazz, the big fella, hey, the oh big man. Gosh. Frank then <laughs> and that's a true story. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Italy's a big basketball center in Europe, and and they know it, but they Find knew the jazz where they knew I was. Yeah, something like that. That's so, funny. Yeah, we had some good times. Okay, back to the All Star, the big the big events. Afterwards, I mean, it was a success, right? It was a success. We proved that we could put on a big event here. Yeah. What advice do you necessary. have for the Smiths <laughs> and the the Jazz now? to put on the big event this You know, one weekend. of the things that I always say is don't forget your past. Don't forget your history. You know, I was always, you know, for instance, I remember when we decided to change the uniforms. You know, at one time, if you remember, the Jazz had nine colors in their uniforms. They were the history of the Jazz. That came from New Orleans. That was the color of the Mardi Gras, mm -hmm. which came from it was a religious, the Mardi Gras was a religious event originally mm -hmm. for the beginning of Lent right. and, and, uh, and Easter. And so, you know, and I always thought that that was important to keep that. So they said, no, we're not going to do it, we're going to sell. You know, so we started changing the colors. Sometimes our uniforms now, I have to, I have to say, and maybe this will hurt somebody's feelings, <laughs> we look like intramural uniforms or something, you know. Different uh, styles. Different styles every game. There's no. I said, isn't it funny? The Yankees never change their uniforms. And it works. And it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something about tradition and customs, yeah. and I would get back to that. And I would never forget your past and your history, because that's something that never can be taken away from you. Mm -hmm. You may disappoint the future, but you're not going to be disappointed about your past. Yeah. And we've had we've had some heroes here. You know, special special people. And I think of of John Stockton, Carl Malone, yeah. uh, uh, Jerry, Jerry Sloan. Sloan yeah. You know. These are giants in the game. That will, their names will be up there for her. Their names come up recently with the LeBron James breaking the scoring mm -hmm. record. That's something the Jazz pasted right on, and it was all done right here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, we used to say Pistol Pete. You know, it was funny. I used to do this, Mary. It's the truth. When we, beginning of every season, I used to talk to the team about our colors of our uniforms. Mm -hmm. Why were we the Jazz? I thought the players should know who we were and what our history was yeah. and be proud to be part of the Jazz, rather than when we were in the beginning, we were a laughing stock. We turned it around to be re representative. You know, I had calls from during the years uh, that I was president there. I had calls from the Dodgers, Pittsburgh uh, football team, Steelers, wanting to know our 
uh, program. What, 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 what soul of jazz in our community? They were asking the same question you were. I said one of the things, winning helps. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. The Yankees win, so there's something special. I said, but you, you also have to sell your product and you have to do it over and over again. And you're a good marketing guy. You have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's important to stay with the same colors, stay with the same uniforms, stay with the same traditions, you know? The bear. A, and build a base. The bear is something yeah. special. Well, well, make sure he doesn't change. He stays forever and whatever he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep your people. I thought one of the things, and this has changed with the jazz, by the way, but I remember one time going into the Dodgers offices and, and whoever it was, I forget now, one of, the, one of the brothers or one of the team said, if you look, at, or look around here, all you see is gray hair. He says, we hire people, we hire good people, we keep them. They stay with us because we treat them good. They're proud to work for us. And that's the same thing that jazz, you carry your traditions on by keeping the same people here. Yeah. People talk about broadcasts, we have good broadcasters now. But uh, when you think about it, when people say the jazz, Hot Rod Hunley comes yep. to mind. Yep. You know, he was a super duper, and uh, and I think that's important. You yeah. know? What Keep was your favorite part, Barbara, about going to those games? Just the fact that I went there, and I had a very good seat. <laughs> and people were always very kind. Yeah. Somebody would always come over and say, oh, "What a good game!" Yeah. You know, and all that. That's and cool. it was just, you know, just wonderful. Fun to be there. Yeah. I wouldn't miss it either. The energy, everything. Yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. But I, I, I really was in a place where a lot of people didn't even know who I was. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you could be there and have fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Barbara never brought the game home. Good. We never, we never argued about the game. I mean, we had arguments like anything else, raising the kids and doing all these <laughs> things. But we had a nice family. Yeah. We had a nice home. Kids went to camp. Barbara went to school. Barbara went back to school here. And this is more important than anything. I got a lot of credit coaching the Jazz. I still get more credit than I deserve. You know, it was Phil Johnson. Mm -hmm. It was Larry. It was uh, Larry Miller. It was uh, Jerry Sloan. I mean, there were so many people. Uh, you know, uh, Sam Batterstone. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for him, where would we be? He brought the team here. You know, uh, I, I think all of those things uh, were important, and we had to step along the way. But the thing is, it had to be fun. Mm -hmm. And it was. Barbara raised the family. I was working. All right. And then she went back to school. Now she went back to school, got her degree from the University of Utah. All right. Okay. And then went out and helped others. She saved lives. I didn't. I couldn't win all the games. I couldn't <laughs> beat the Lakers. They were killing me. But, but uh, uh, you know, uh, Pat Riley. But Barbara, Barbara would, uh, would say uh, things like, Oh boy, that Pat Riley, he's a good looking guy. Oh, well, you know, uh, you're right. I'm getting white. What can I say? But she, uh, she, uh, she went out and she worked with people in drug and alcohol abuse, yeah. women, and uh, she got an honorary degree from Niagara for, for that. She got honored by the Mormon Church for it. Yeah. Uh, and she's, she's, she deserved all those things. She's a great lady. Yeah, and she, she put up with you. And she put up with me besides that, raising the family and, uh, and thing. But we always got along. She just gets a medal for we that, were, right? Yeah, yeah, we were both Dodger fans. Yeah. You know, we grew up, she grew up, grew up right near Rabbit's Field where, where the Dodgers played. And I had, I loved baseball and, and I was at uh, Jackie Robinson's first game. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And we went to baseball games. We went to, in the off year. And we liked the theater, mm -hmm. and we did love letters together. We did the That's theater right. things together. For years. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot yeah. of fun, raised a lot of money. And we tried to give back. Yeah. I can't, I think other that that's... Other foundations, I see Ron McBride Foundation. And, oh, Ron and McBride, others. I could never yeah. catch up with him. He's the best. Well, it's been great catching up with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Ron McBride is, 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 is an example of what everybody should be that's in sports. We're all here because we're blessed either by special, uh, what would you say, uh, uh, skills or, or things that were God-given to us were born, maybe tall, whatever it is. Uh, and yet uh, we all have had a wonderful life, and the only way we can complete that life is what the great Jackie Robinson told us. A life is only as important 
as the impact it has on other lives. That's on his gravestone. It's and look beautiful. at what he did. Yeah. So, you know, I, I always preach that. Just give back. Yeah. The money comes and goes. I mean, you know, I never was afraid of being fired. I always thought if I got fired, I'd get a better job. <laughs> I'd win the broadcast. Yeah. I'd do something. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. I mean, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, it's there. But, but the other thing is have fun. Life's yeah. too short. All of a sudden, you look back and you, what are you going to remember, the bad things? And I can remember some of the things I regret. If I had regrets, you know, and uh, as Frank Sinatra said, too few to mention, uh, I, I would say, yeah, I regret my running with, uh, with uh, Adrian Dantley. Mm. It used up a lot of energy the whole summer and everything, and we were bitter and what have you. And it was only competitive was my yeah. inner self being beaten up by his agent who was smarter than me. I should have admitted that and given him the money and whatever it took to. Yeah. But uh, that was something I regret. And I also regret fighting with the referees. That was something I should have avoided. It was entertaining. It was entertaining, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good for them. Yeah. And it wasn't good for me. Yeah. I mean, I would have, I, I, it, should have been, it should have been more fun than that and it shouldn't have been that important. Yeah. They did the best they could. I don't think they were dishonest, which then I'd have a real complaint. But I yeah. think, you know, I, who am I to judge whether they did a good job yeah. or not? It wasn't my job. I certainly didn't do as well coaching as they did refereeing. I've always, I've always said, how, how many times has a referee changed their mind after being yelled at? Never. <laughs> Never. No, they, in fact, Never. It, it makes them more right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Doesn't yes. help to yell. Yes.